I represent a neuroscience camp at this conference. Uh, over 40 years, uh, my empirical work was in neuroscience of learning and memory. In the beginning of 80s, <coughs> uh, we identified genes that are involved in establishment of long-term memory. They became known as immediate early genes. We found that uh, they are necessary for formation of long-term memory. And uh, since they are ubiquitously expressed during various forms of learning, we designed different uh, approaches to use these genes to map the uh, engram circuits, memory circuits in the brain using uh, molecular biology tools, uh, optical imaging, uh, whole brain mapping, brain atlases, etc. But with all uh, these uh, approaches, uh, you finally approach uh, the question, and where is me in the brain? And actually, what is me? And uh, Focusing on uh, this question, uh, I started developing a theory which is called uh, the Neural Hypernetwork Theory, Cognitome. Uh, I started doing this about 10 years ago. Gerald Edelman uh, once told me that uh, in his experience to shape uh, a theory like that uh, takes 15 years. So there is still uh, five years in, in the future. But um, I will briefly uh, present uh, an outline, uh, oversimplified outline of, the, of this framework approach. In this, I will build on three yesterday talks uh, of Anil Seth, of Stuart Hameroff, and uh, Nicholas Humphrey. <coughs> Taking the uh, message of uh, Anil Seth, which is uh, also the question of being you, uh, I will propose that the theory uh, which we are developing sh makes a shift from focus uh, on consciousness to focus on mind, which is shift from process to structure. Uh, I will explain it. Uh, in a few moments. The second shift which I would like to take is to pick up uh, the um, message of Stuart that neuroscience needs a revolution. But while uh, Stuart uh, goes deeper uh, at the bottom uh, for this revolution, uh, I'm using this uh, phrase of Richard Feynman to tell that there is plenty uh, of room at the top and going uh, up. So uh, the second shift uh, from the current neuroscience thinking is shift from micro to macro. And finally, uh, uh, Nicholas' uh, talk on evolving sentence, which I th think is a very important po point for understanding of consciousness. I will modify it, saying that uh, what is important and what the theory of cognitum addresses, it focuses not on phylogeny, but more on ontogeny. That is, shift from evolutionary to developmental emergence of mind and consciousness. So, uh, summing up these three premises, uh, the theory proposes that consciousness is not the right entering point for the science of consciousness. Mind uh, is a proper one. The addressing uh, the question of mind has to be first comparable to addressing directly the question of consciousness. Second, that uh, the brain at its maximal existence, that is cause-effect potential, uh, should be understood not as a physiological neural network, connectome, but cognitive neural hypernetwork, cognitome. And the third one, that mind and consciousness originate not through evolution per se, 
but through rather evolution of individual development and learning. And th this is the place where these uh, structures and processes originate. So I will explain uh, in more details uh, all these three premises. The first one is that consciousness, uh, according to the theory, is a specific process, while uh, mind is a specific structure. And if there is no such structure, there is no such process in this structure. I will use a metaphor uh, to uh, explain uh, this idea. We can uh, identify mind with organic structure, like, for example, the sun. And then consciousness is a process in this structure. So we need this structure for this process to take place. And viewing uh, the mind as a structure has a number of advantages. For example, we can start asking questions. What is the nature of this structure? How uh, is it built? And how did it originate? Furthermore, we can uh, start asking the question, how can we map uh, this kind of structure? And finally, we can start studying processes that are specific only to this structure, like mental processes, including uh, consciousness. Shift number one, from micro to macro, to understand this structure, uh, we have to move from studying the brain at its physiological uh, level to studying it at its cognitive level of organization, which is, uh, according to the theory, not a neural network, but a neural hyper network. So uh, in this uh, diagram, we have uh, the brain composed of cogs. But what exactly are uh, these cogs? And how can we formalize and understand uh, this complex structure uh, comparable to known approaches in the network neuroscience. Theory suggests that uh, each cognitome neural hypernetwork consists of two uh, type of elements, vertices and edges. Vertices uh, are called cogs or cognitive groups. The term cog has a double meaning in the theory. Uh, in English, it is a subordinate but integral part of the whole system. And uh, in the theory, it is also a unit of qualitatively specific experience uh, carried by these groups of elements, of neurons. Uh, so it is a separate element in the mental system. Uh, these cooperative groups of uh, neurons which are distributed and sparse uh, in the nervous system and formed during development and learning are starting to encode the relations of the organism uh, with its uh, outer and later on inner environment. So they become cognitively specialized. Uh, in terms of cause-effect power, that means that activation of this group of elements means that at the previous mo moment the uh, distribution of probabilities in the environment was not uniform, but was corresponding to a particular aspect of the relation of organism to in the environment. And activity uh, of uh, this group of elements means that the future of the relations of organism with the environment will be also not uniform uh, in probability, but will change according to the uh, effect power of this group of elements. In this uh, sense, it is information in and information out, or uh, since it is stored as a group of elements in memory, it is a knowledge of organism, the element of the knowledge of organisms. Cox uh, have different uh, uh, 
uh, size. Uh, they are of different forms. There is a whole zoo of uh, such cognitive groups. In uh, details, I, I cannot go into the into details of this classification. But uh, an important part of the hyper network is that uh, these groups are linked by relations. And the relations are uh, not the same like in uh, networks, like in neural networks. The link between two uh, cognitive elements is not the connection of uh, axons of one uh, group of neurons to another group of neurons. Uh, the link is uh, uh, the neural elements themselves, overlapping elements which belong to the first cognitive group and the second cognitive group, which means that uh, this element becomes neuron specialized in the uh, cog number one, and if it is uh, being activated, it can potentiate the retrieval from memory of cog number two or three, depending on the number of uh, other groups to which this uh, common unit uh, with a superposition belongs. So, cogs and locks. And uh, briefly, uh, the theory says that uh, such cognitive system consists, uh, therefore, of cognitively specialized elements. Elements uh, which, uh, within the organism, being the part of organism, encode the knowledge of the whole organism, the particular uh, aspect of knowledge of the whole organism uh, about the environment, uh, first outside and second uh, with the internalization of inner environment. Uh, these elements are concentrated uh, in the central nervous system and they form a cognitive organ of the body, its cognitome. It has specific structure and cause-effect power, which can be mathematically, and I cannot go into details here, approximated by the mathematical concept of uh, hypernetworks. Uh, so the mind, according to theory, in most useful understanding uh, of its term uh, is organic structure, which is identical to this higher order uh, hypernetwork of the brain and its specific causal properties. Whenever the brain or nervous system develops such hypernetwork, it constitutes the maximal level of existence of the brain and the organism. So simplifying it into three questions, we can say that uh, to the question what is the brain, uh, uh, it can be said that it can be described as is done today by the network theory as a neural network. But the mind uh, at the level n plus one can be also described as a network, cognitive network. And the uh, mind-body relation, a relation of n to n plus one according to the theory can be described as a cognitive hypernetwork of the physiological brain network. I would stress once more that uh, according to this approach uh, mind is a neural network organized into hypernetwork so it is not a virtual system it is an organic uh, structure being built by development and uh, experience and learning. We were not able in neuroscience to visualize and study this type of structures because they consist of clouds of neurons which are distributed and active only during performance of particular behaviors. So there were no sufficient tools uh, until recently to uh, identify these groups of neurons, to study how they appear during uh, experience and how they shape the behavior of the organism. But these tools are appearing now. <laughs> the theory uh, in its development consists of uh, three stages or three parts. Conceptual model, which I described uh, a little bit. 
formal model, which is a mathematical description of neural hypernetworks, and neurobiological model, which brings uh, these principles to uh, neural mechanisms of formation of this hypernetwork. Now I move to the uh, third shift from uh, phylogeny to ontogeny or from evolutionary emergence to developmental emergence where mind and consciousness originate during individual development. In a sense, this is uh, the way uh, to approach uh, the uh, vital question uh, what is me or who are we? Uh, in the ontogenetic time scale, this is the famous painting of Gauguin, uh, which uh, addresses the questions uh, where do we come from, what are we, and where are we going. And Gauguin explained that to read this painting, it is necessary to look uh, from uh, right to left from the uh, group of uh, women giving birth with the, to a child, to various functional activities of uh, adult uh, people, and uh, finally to that uh, old uh, gray woman sitting uh, with the deep uh, thoughts uh, um, where we are going. So uh, the neural hypernetwork theory addresses this question also in this uh, line of, uh, up, uh, of dynamics. Uh, it asks uh, what is necessary, minimal and sufficient for the Darwinian organism uh, to develop mind in ontogenetic development. We know that uh, this uh, type of development uh, reproducibly occurs to all the organisms which bear mind and comparable to evolutionary uh, approach or evolutionary question uh, it is much easier also to study this emergence uh, experimentally in the development behavior learning and memory so uh, the theory suggests uh, that uh, uh, three simple uh, basic biological uh, principles are uh, necessary and sufficient to, uh, for the system to build the mind. Why biologically? Because uh, none of these uh, principles involves any cognitive or mental uh, terms. That means that these are ground principles of biological system which does not possess at the moment uh, any cognitive uh, properties. These principles are generative functional systems, deep integrative network, and cellular associative uh, memory. Uh, to explain a little bit uh, the first and the major uh, principle of generative functional systems, and also to go back to the uh, higher order mind-brain identity uh, thesis which was proposed by the theory. Uh, I have to uh, uh, return to some of the historical development uh, which is the background for this theory. The uh, approaches which were taken in the Russian uh, neuroscience over the last uh, century and a half in the search of the neural basis of the mind. Uh, Ivan Pavlov was, uh, of course, uh, with his conditioned reflexes, looking for the physiological uh, basis of mental activity. The question he posed at the beginning of uh, his study of conditioned reflexes, how does the matter of the brain give rise to subjective phenomena? His solution uh, to this was uh, a direct uh, mind-brain identity. He believed and stressed many times that uh, the association uh, as known in psychology uh, is a fundamental case uh, which can be identified 
with the principle of uh, cell that fire together, wire together, which was popularized later by HEP, by temporal uh, connections between different parts of the central nervous system representing uh, conditioned stimulus and unconditioned stimulus. Uh, so that was the idea of uh, direct mind-brain identity. It was held also by a number of other Russian neuroscientists uh, who uh, studied this question at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century. But uh, something interesting and important happened in uh, 1920s when uh, Marxism came uh, to Russia uh, in a form of historical and dialectical materialism. In the middle of 1920s, two uh, scientists, two young scientists uh, in Russia took uh, this idea of uh, emergence in historical and dialectical sense to the uh, study of the mind-brain problem and understanding of the social nature of the mind. That were Lev Vygotsky uh, with his work, uh, The Historical Meaning of Psychological Crisis, and Peter Anokhin with his work, Dialectical Materialism and the Problem of Mind. So what was uh, developed uh, then as a functional system uh, theory uh, in the work of uh, School of P.K. Anokin uh, can be uh, described in a nutshell, uh, uh, avoiding the terms of materialism as a deep macro-realism, uh, which I suggest as a coincise uh, uh, principle of uh, functional systems theory. Uh, it suggests that the macro level is different from micro level because it has different specific structural and organizational properties which can be studied scientifically uh, and uh, understood uh, mm, experimentally. Uh, macro level is real because it has its own cause effect powers different from uh, micro level and its cause effect power. The third point is most important. Uh, it is not present in the classical British emergentism, for example, but was present in uh, the dialectical materialism approach. That macro level is deep because micro level in macro systems is transformed and carries uh, these macro properties. That means that the macro uh, properties are not overlaid over the existing micro properties, but the whole system from top to down is being transformed uh, according to the new structural level of organization. What it means for uh, neurobiological mechanisms that uh, Leibniz Mill argument, which was uh, mm, suggested him as a um, criticism of mechanical materialism, the famous idea that uh, if we will imagine the brain uh, as a large mill and uh, enter into it, we will uh, see different moving parts in this mill, but uh, by examining uh, its interior, we find only such mechanical parts uh, and never anything in which, by which to explain a perception or any mental properties. Studies in the School of Functional Systems in 1970s, uh, 80s uh, showed uh, that uh, experimentally uh, in uh, animals uh, which learn uh, new tasks uh, in a complex environment, uh, the activity of neurons in the waking brain uh, uh, is become specialized in the relation to certain functional systems, uh, behavioral functional systems that they perform. That means the elements of subjective experience, of experience which they acquire uh, in the experimental situation. Neurons of many brain structures was shown are simultaneously involved in such functional systems being synchronized. And in the waking brain, neurons exhibit anticipatory activity. 
determined not by stimuli, uh, but by goals and intentions which are retrieved uh, from memory. So as an example, for example, here, uh, the neuron uh, showed uh, with uh, in uh, rabbit which learned to either to pull the trigger or to press uh, the pedal to obtain food. Uh, different neurons in the brain can be specialized either to performance uh, of this behavior on the uh, left and right side with the two levers or two uh, uh, rings or only uh, by doing uh, pressing the pedal or pulling the ring or any combination of this so these are elements of new experience rings, pedals, which will never existed in the experience of animals, and the neurons uh, are being specialized uh, in a, a sessions of learning to this. We uh, are studying this uh, specialization now using different optical uh, recording methods and find, for example, that uh, this specialization uh, occurs very rapidly uh, uh, upon the entrance of uh, the animal into the new conditions from uh, nearly the first trial being stabilized uh, later on. So what uh, is uh, suggested in the theory uh, of neural hypernetworks is that uh, if we will take the rules of natural selection working in the organism uh, without nervous system, they can be uh, viewed as algorithm, where combination of independent principles of one, two, and three uh, being present together and uh, extended by the cumulative effects of genetic memory. Uh, Though being very simple, in uh, hundreds uh, of uh, millions of years, can give a surprising structural complexity and diversity. To append it with the uh, uh, rules of uh, learning and memory in the developing organism, which are simple enough uh, and each of them is uh, not containing any cognitive uh, principle, uh, can give uh, the similar algorithm which works ontogenetically and due to the long-term memory uh, in the uh, neural system can build a, a neural hypernetwork over uh, the existing neural network uh, supplying the organism with the uh, individual and complex cognitive properties. So addressing both the question of the complex design of uh, the mind and diversity of individual minds or minds of individual speci species depending on the experience uh, uh, they have uh, in the nature. So. Final question, what is consciousness in this framework? Theory suggests that it is a global percolation. The process of penetration of activity of a cognitive group through the uh, cognitome reaching uh, access to the rest of the cognitive groups or uh, cognitome uh, as a whole or me or self. This is a work in progress and Thank you for your attention.